There's something genuinely wrong with Justin Trudeau, and I'm past, I'm above and beyond the fact that I think he's faking it. We all know he's a failed drama teacher. I do not believe that this is an act which he would be so consistent with putting up. I think he's there's something just actually wrong with him, and I think he needs some form of medical treatment or diagnosis so that he can you know get the help that he needs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev debate with a little bit of sellout Singh in there, and it just backfires every time. Jagmeet Singh takes a pot shot at Pierre Polyev or Trudeau, it backfires. And every time Justin Trudeau tries to stand up to Pierre Poiliev, it backfires times infinity. It's just embarrassing on all levels. But today I have a special announcement for you guys. I've teamed up with a sponsor. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. We've teamed up together and are willing to offer my audience 83% off using the code House of Canada, which can be found linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. There's no easy way of putting this. Justin Trudeau is trying to censor the internet and he's trying to implement a digital ID. And the only way that you can actually really protect yourself online is through a VPN. And my go-to VPN is private internet access. Now, those who don't know what a VPN is, it acts as a way to encrypt your data, which means that all the big tech companies, including the government, can't access your information. Your information bounces around from IP address to IP address. And it doesn't just act as a way to protect your Yourself, but it's also a way to access content which you wouldn't regularly be able to get because of geolocation restrictions such as Netflix or Disney. I know a lot of people in Canada want to access the American stuff and the only real way to do that is with a VPN and it is so user friendly with private internet access. You can have it on your phone, your tablet, all of your devices, your computers, etc. Just be sure to use House of Canada as your code which should be linked down in the description or the pinned comment below to get yourself 83 percent off with private internet access thank you private internet access for sponsoring today's video Questions oral questions questions honorable leader of the opposition canada's next prime minister pierre polyev after nine years of this ndp liberal prime minister's taxes debt inflation and promises canadians are hungry literally according to the Bank of Canada, the Food Bank's Canada report, 50% of Canadians say they're worse off than a year ago. 25% are in food insecurity. And a quarter of young adults went to a food bank in three months alone this year. Wow. Why is it that Canadians who can't feed themselves have to keep feeding his morbidly obese government? Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Right, That's a pretty wild choice of words, Pierre. Speaker, it would be slightly more credible to hear the Conservatives concerned about the challenges Canadians are facing if they hadn't stood and voted against uh, yes. more spaces in child care, voted against uh, our dental care program that... Two million seniors have signed up for and has now delivered close to 100,000 uh, dental appointments for seniors in just 22 days, Mr. Speaker. Uh, they've also stood against our uh, school foods program that's going to help 400,000 more kids across the country have full bellies as they start their school day. These are investments that they are opposed to that we are there to help Canadians with. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's a school food program that has not served a single solitary meal, even though it was promised three years ago. What he's feeding is bureaucracy, not children. And if all of his spending were working, then why is it that Food Banks Canada reports today that 25% of young adults had to go to a food bank in three months alone and two million Canadians are lined up every month. Mr. Speaker, with so many empty stomachs, isn't it just a little bit wacko to be raising carbon taxes on farmers and food? Ooh, he said the thing! He said the thing! The right honorable Prime Minister. 
<laughs> Speaker, we announced the National Food School Program in the budget, and just after question period today, the Conservatives will have an opportunity to vote in favour of the yeah. National School yeah. Food Program yes, and will. other initiatives that are going to help hundreds of thousands of kids across this country, and indeed millions of Canadians with the high cost of living. But he's going to stand there and vote against it, Mr. Speaker, to prevent it from developing, delivering the help Canadians need. We will keep going on delivering support for Canadians, and we will keep going on putting more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians with our price on pollution that supports Canadian families and successfully fights climate change. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He's been making exactly the same promises for nine long years, long, and yet long. his NDP Liberal government has doubled housing costs, doubled the debt, increased the size of the bureaucracy by 50 percent. Now he wants to quadruple the carbon tax, all to deliver two million people to a food bank every single month. Mr. Speaker, if government programs were really going to solve the problem he caused, then why are Canadians so hungry? Yeah, yeah that's a good point. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, here is a perfect example of where the Conservatives stand. They stood and voted against our dental care for seniors program. As of today, over 2 million seniors have signed up, and in the 22 days since May 1st, close to 100,000 seniors have gotten free dental care. That's in just 22 days. On a program that he voted against and that he campaigned against across the country over the past number of months. We will be there to invest in supporting Canadians with a national school food program, with dental care, with more child care spaces, despite him voting against. Here, here. isn't content just ripping off Canadians when they buy their groceries. Now they're teaming up with Rogers. This guy always focused on Loblaws. Is this going to... It's important that we are able to hear the uh, questions that are being asked as well as the answers. The Honourable Member from Burnaby South from the top, please. Sure. I, again, I know the Conservatives don't like when I take on corporate greed, but Loblaws... Oh my goodness, this guy just purity tests time after time. Now Loblaws is teaming up with Rogers and Bell to rip off Canadians with their cell phone prices. We know they're going to limit choices, and limiting choices means higher prices for Canadians. The Prime Minister promised to lower cell phone fees, they're sky high. He promised to lower grocery fees, they're sky high. When will the Prime Minister finally stop greedy CEOs from ripping off Canadians. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we've actually seen its cell phone bills decrease across the country by 25% uh, over the past number of years, and we're going to continue to stand up for Canadian consumers. Uh, and indeed, I know the Minister uh, is looking into the Competition Act to see uh, if there are needs to be referred uh, on a number of things that are come forward. But we're going to continue to stand up for the middle class and people working hard to join it, uh, which is why we raised corporate taxes, uh, why we asked the wealthiest Canadians to pay a little more so we can invest more in younger Canadians, why we're continuing to step up on creating fairness for every generation with this budget, with the investments we're taking, uh, we're making, and with further investments as well. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, normally the NDP leader is well worth ignoring, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> he says that the Prime Minister acts like he has no power to stop all of these greedy CEOs from ripping off consumers. Who else has the power? Well, the guy that joined the government two years ago. <laughs> He's been in power during the worst food price inflation in over four decades. Will the Prime Minister agree with me that his carbon tax coalition is nothing more than an anti-competitive price-fixing scheme that is costing Canadians at the grocery store? Yeah. 
Let's drop some W's in the chat now. Let's look alive, folks. Uh, let's look alive. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we see that the Conservative Party's opposition to the price on pollution uh, is ideological and not concrete because uh, their opposition to the price on pollution means they don't care about fighting against climate change. Even as wildfires are already raging in different parts of the country, they have no plan to fight against climate change. And they do it in the name of affordability by it, while ignoring that the Parliamentary Budget Officer actually showed that 8 out of 10 Canadian families do better. It's just not true. In their pockets on the Canada carbon rate rebate than it costs them with the price on pollution. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer has concluded that 60% of Canadians pay more in carbon tax costs than they get back in the phony rebates. 100% of middle-class Canadians pay more than they get back in the phony rebates. And now the Prime Minister wants to quadruple the tax, all at a time when he's preparing to hand over par power to carbon tax Carney. Will the Prime Minister confirm if carbon tax Carney will follow through on his plan to hike the tax to 61 cents a litre? I mean, I would sure love Mr. cheaper gas. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed that 8 out of 10 Canadian families in jurisdictions where the carbon price uh, federal backstop applies do better off with more money in their pockets through the Canada carbon rebate checks that land in their bank accounts four times a year. That's money in their pockets that goes to the cost of groceries, the cost of rent, uh, the cost of everything they need to raise their families. That is money in their pockets that the leader of the opposition would take away because of its ideological cru crusade against climate action. Then I have Seth to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister's wacko carbon tax obsession is costing Canadians not just at the pump, but it raises the cost of home heating, of groceries, because of course if you tax the farmer who produces the food and the trucker who ships the food, you tax all who buy the food. It's a housing tax because it raises the cost of building materials that go into homes. With the report out today, that 25% of young people had to go to a food bank in just three months. Will he accept the common sense conservative bill to take the tax off the farmers who produce our food? The right honourable Prime Minister. Well said, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition continues to make that argument even though he knows full well that. Farm fuels are 95% exempt from the price on pollution right across the country, Mr. Speaker. That is something that he ignores because of his ideological opposition to take any action in fighting climate change. Well, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, in conservative writings right across the country, people are worried about droughts, people are worried about floods, people are worried about wildfires that are more and more severe. Canadians need a clean plan to fight climate change, which is something he hasn't put forward while we are fighting climate change and putting money in people's pockets. That is the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stuck around to this point. If you have, I would like to encourage you guys one last time to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. And let me know down below in the comments what your favorite part of this debate was. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.